Hey guys, how you doing? I uh, just finished reading The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker, the uh, 1966 classic, The Definitive Guide to Getting the Right Things Done, and I wanted to um, quickly share some thoughts. Um, the book is super important, which is why it's uh, often cited 50 years later from uh, its first publication, um, because it really dives into management and time management and um, you know, time being the most valuable asset that we all have, you know, any way that we can manage that better to become more effective, uh, I think is important and something that it's the reason that I read the book because I'm always looking for ways that I can, um, you know, become more effective. Now, what the book really dives into is effectiveness versus efficiency, right? Um, and it, it asks the question, or you can ask yourself the question, do you, in most cases, do things right or do you do the right things? And effectiveness uh, equates to the latter, right? Doing the right things rather than doing things right. We've all had those crazy busy days where you're getting slammed with emails, you have phone calls and you're responding and you're being an ace and, and everyone thinks you're brilliant. You have a client write you something, they have a problem, two minutes later you fire back an answer. Everyone loves you. You spend the whole day not really breathing, not really looking up, and at the end of the day, you feel pretty good because you, you know, knocked everything out of the box. Um, however, this book, Peter Drucker would argue that that is a day where maybe you're doing things well and you're being efficient, but were those the right things that you should have been doing that, that day? Did you, did you set the task? Did you set the priorities? Did you decide this is the one or two or three things that I must focus on today that makes everything else fall into place? Probably not. It seems like a more reactive posi uh, position than a proactive position. And, you know, that, that's what attracted me to the book because I, I'm, I want to become more effective as much as possible. I want to manage my time. I don't want to waste with silly phone calls, silly emails, silly meetings that, that are unnecessary. So, um, and I have a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've had many of those busy days where you like you feel good, but the reality is they're not that great. Um, and being effective is a it's a practice, just like yoga or meditation. Uh, it takes reps, and you have to <clears throat> develop some habits um, and keep practicing those habits in order, you know, day after day after day until it becomes second nature, and all of your decisions and all of your actions um, are just second nature, and they are all you know effective rather than just being efficient and reactive. Now, there are a few reasons why I, I didn't enjoy this book, and I think it's pretty easy to nail down why, and I'll, I'll give you three reasons. One is um, Tim Ferriss. So I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan. Um, I like his work, his podcast, etc., just the way he thinks about life, and especially maximizing your output and time management. Very, you know, a cousin to, to this book, really. Um, so I feel like through him, I, I kind of already knew the main takeaways from this book because he's very repetitive in the things that he does and very, you know, militant about this is the way you do this, this is the way you do this, and that be, that gives you more space and more free time and that that ten x is your your output. Um, so by following him, I think I knew a lot of what the high level stuff in this book was, right? So I went in kind of like, I don't know that I learned that much. Um, there were more examples of that type of decision making and time setting and whatnot, but I don't know if that helped me because uh, I felt it was all very familiar. Um, the second reason, it felt old um, and it was written in 1966, the first publication. So a lot of the references were to um, World War II or presidents around that time or the media just, you know, it's a very different life obviously then than it is now. So, um, you know, ways to go about managing your time or making effective decisions. Um, now you have apps and technology and computers and just different ways that you can go about it. So uh, by the end of the book, I was just like, was bored. I, I wanted it to be done. Um, and third, I would say most of the examples that, um, that Drucker gives are large organizations, right? Um, GE, for example, or government. Um, I'm not a large organization, and I don't, you know, swim in that in that pond. So a lot of those things were again boring. 
I don't want to say irrelevant because the principles were still there, but again, it was principles that I've already learned or felt comfortable with. So the example of this hierarchy of a CEO versus the middle management and how you can be effective at any level and, and so on um, didn't really speak to me personally. Uh, that being said, overall recommendation is the subject matter is incredibly important because it addresses time and being effective and there's not many more things uh, more important than that. Um, so I think everyone should understand those principles. Does that mean you have to go out and read the book? Not necessarily. I think you can get a lot of the main takeaways just by putting in a little effort um, on the uh, good old Google machine and Cliff Notes and, and whatever. I just think that it's not necessary. Speaking of being effective in time usage, I don't think it's necessary to read the whole book uh, to get from it what the important things are. So hope that helps. Um, there's my book review of The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. Thanks.